one, go. At the very beginning of the United States, our nation had been an agrarian society. Much like other nations, agriculture was essential to support life in the new world as colonists looking to claim the land for themselves. However, as the nation continued along its path, industrialization took primary focus as people saw where the country needed to head. With this primary focus on industrialization, many new inventions were brought to life that would change industry forever. The light bulb brought light to the normally dark workplaces. The Transcontinental Railroad offered business better transportation of goods, and a new way of producing steel helped to make stronger and overall more buildings. Yet these great inventions would also come with very negative effects because of the massive change they brought to industry. For instance, the light bulb made workers have longer work days, and new industrial processes made very dangerous work conditions. To top this off, workers were paid very small amounts and did not have any benefits, while workers were suffering and being robbed, the robber barons exploited the working class to keep the wealth for themselves. Prior to industrialization, America had never had a class of wealthy businessmen that could control so much of society. Robber barons focused solely on making a profit, so their employees' working conditions were the last thing on their mind. This put their workers into risk as the workspace was unsanitary and dangerous. Many of the employees were also living in poverty. As these robber bands paid very little, and he, even they were becoming more wealthy every minute. On average, workers were paid 22 cents per hour, which is not even $6 with inflation. Consequently, they were required to work 10 to 12 hour work days with no vacation time, no sick days, no health care, and were only given short breaks. Due to workers suffering at the hands of uh, money hungry thieves, an angel appeared to the side of these impoverished Americans. This angel brought better wages, shorter work hours, better working conditions, and represented these exploited workers. This angel was under the name of labor unions. Some of the most influential unions were the Knights of Labor, led by Terence Powderly, American Federation of Labor, led by Samuel uh, Gompers, and also the American Railway Union, led by Eugene Debs. Unions protected ch uh, children by setting a minimum age requirement to work to decrease the amount of small children working. Unions quickly spread because they offered better benefits and united workers under a single voice, allowing them for the first time to speak about their working conditions. However, the wealthy class did not like unions, and because jobs were in such high demands, if they found out a worker was unionized or on strike, they would simply replace the worker. This was due to the high demands of job and robber baron's freedom to fire a high maintenance employee. The government sided with the robbers because their entire economy was based off of these uh, companies and constantly quelled strikes with federal troops. For example, in Baltimore, Maryland, Chicago, Illinois, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Buffalo, New York, and San Francisco, California, the government sent troops to ally with the robber barons and end strikes. It was not until the 1930s that the government would set labor standards that unions had been pushing for half a century. Unions were successful because it gave workers more benefits and care and what was previously supplied by their bosses, and it unified all workers under one goal. This forced the robber barons to listen to the workers' demands because as one, they were weak, but as many, they were strong.